Hello, uh, sorry it's been a while since I've made a video. Uh, I've been a little bit busy doing things, um, got a little bit of a cold, uh, so I might sound a bit muffled, <laughs> but I wanted to do a painting of a fox in the snow. That was my very basic sort of idea behind this picture. Um, I thought it'd be nice for winter um, and I've used um, an approach I used for another project um, called Wolf and Hood I worked on quite a while ago now which was to start trying different compositions using 3D objects in Blender um, this isn't what the final picture will look like. I do intend to use this as a reference uh, or a base to then hand paint on and the program I'm going to be using to do that will be PD Howler because I really liked the brushes in that. Um, a painting I did recently of a squirrel really turned out very well using that program. Uh, I'm just going to show you how that turned out, although I have made a video on it. Um, so this was the painting I did in PD Howler not, not too long ago. Uh, Um, I liked the way that the texture and the the blendy brushes all worked really nicely. Uh, although I, I have been using a program called Krita to do my paintings a lot in the last several years, uh, this this program really reminded me of uh, Coral Painter. It, in the, it was nice and blendy, it felt lovely to paint in um, and the brushes are very easy to customise and just a lot of really good things about the programme. Uh, I have made some videos on that recently as well <laughs> but anyway they, they've got a new version of, of the programme and I want to test it out so I thought I'd uh, do it by making another painting. So back to the uh, fox project. These, the fox I made using a program called Curvy 3D, uh, just a very basic low poly mesh. I can show you how that looked in Blender because I exported it as an OBJ file. So I went to import. Uh, remember, I have to remember where I've put it. My file system is, uh, it's better than it used to be. I gave it a bit of an organization this earlier. So this is uh, the fox I made, As it's very basic, uh, maybe one day I'll sculpt more detail onto this um, and make a nice model out of it, but, but I just needed something very basic for this project. So what I then did was in the the add-ons in Blender, there's one that comes with it. It's not always uh, enabled by default, but it's called Rigging Rigify. And I've got that enabled here. And you go to Shift A and Armature, and then you can add different rigs that are ready made for you called meta rigs and I just added a wolf 
and then I went into edit mode and positioned the bones so it went over my model and then I uh, did automatic weights to join the rig to the body so that's uh, how I did that one and the project I've got here is a blend file I've got all my objects in Blender I think I've disabled guides but so I've got my camera framing the scene I wanted um, I couldn't quite get the camera to be the size I wanted so I, I did actually do a bit of a trick with it I exported um, the screenshot of this this navigation window and then I cropped it in Affinity Photo to the size I wanted it I think I've got that in here so here I exported this screenshot and then I cropped the size I wanted in Affinity here so you can see I've still got the line there so then I rendered uh, the way I did I rendered the size I wanted in Blender again was um, I went to background images here I've got a plugin called perspective plotter uh, I don't think it's free but it's very useful um, and then I added the background image that I'd cropped and then in perspective plotter I there was an option to match the camera here match background to the size of the camera so that sent then made the camera the same size as the image I'd cropped um, I tried doing it manually in the settings it, but I just couldn't seem to figure out how to do it for some reason but this just set it all up for me with one click so that was good um, these other meshes are from a, a guy called um, Quaternius that's probably not his real name but that's how he goes on the internet um, he makes these uh, free sets of low low poly meshes uh, intended to be used in game development I think but I thought they would make nice simple models to use to compose scenes for illustration or anything you want really but he's got lots of different ones so you've got cars and trees cakes weapons um, furniture, people uh, yeah, loads of stuff and it doesn't really matter if they don't look exactly how you'd want them because they're literally the, the low detail blocky nature of them is actually a good thing because then you can not not get too bogged down by how they look and just do what you want with them uh, if if they were really detailed it, it would uh, wouldn't quite be as creative I don't think plus it take longer to load um, anyway the set I used for this project was this ultimate nature pack um, particularly the snow covered trees so 
so that was very useful. Uh, I thought I'd mention him. Uh, he also has a Patreon. So, yeah, if you're into helping people and you've got money, then you could give him a bit of money. Uh, I might do. I haven't got a Patreon account at the moment. I, I'll have to set another one up, but that's for another time. Um, this, so getting back to my train of thought, then I decided to test whether it would make a decent painting or not. Um, using a little method of, there's a program called PhotoSketcher and I just ran a, a very basic filter on it. Um, just a bit of fun really, I didn't have to do this but it helped get rid of the blocky look of it as well. So I thought that was uh, useful. So you select different filters in this program from this menu and you can test out different looks, maybe get a bit of inspiration for a style you might want to work on. Um, it only works with low low res images really, this program, so although I guess you could use it for high res, but Mainly I'm using it as a um, in development tool, not as the end result. I would never think this was a final result. Um, so then I wanted to try different colour schemes, so I remembered I had a program called Dynamic Auto Painter. Oh, I've clicked on the wrong thing. So I'm getting old, so excuse me. Um, this program, it again, it, it depends uh, what your aim is with digital art, but I don't see it as as an end result because personally, I like to paint things from scratch myself. However, to get an idea of uh, different styles or different ways of, of looking at things, it is a fun program to use and it has a feature called Im Impressions and it might be helpful if I have a, an example picture here. Um, I'll put my squirrel in although it's probably better to use photographs with this thing, but... Um, you've got an ac acryl... well, acrylic sort of looking thing. And I'm not saying all of these are... look like... perfect or anything, but they, they are quite creative. Um, it's not using artificial intelligence or anything. It's it's old older school than that, but it does I don't really know how it works. It's more like the sort of uh, Photoshop filtery sort of thing I think, but it might be a bit cleverer than that. Basically I don't I don't want to get into the technical stuff about it. You could read more about it on the website. Um, I'll just show you the website, why not? It's called Media Chance, so... Um, this program's been around for a long time. The version I've got is uh, Dynamic Auto Painter 6, so they've got a version 7 now as well. But I don't really have a need to upgrade it because uh, 
I only use it for a bit of fun every so often. Uh, um, and it's, it's not on sale at the moment. Sometimes it's on sale, so that's when you should get it if you wanted it. Um, it has quite a few features that you might find interesting. I'm not really going to go into this because this wasn't the focus of the video. Um, but that's the website for it. So basically you pick a style and then you say start and it does its thing. It says all this stuff about reactors and things and I don't know. So as you can see it's it's not um not always a good thing, but it's sort of interesting, maybe it might give you an idea for different styles or approaches you might want to try. And every time you try a different preset it uses the original image you put in, so you don't have to keep uh, reverting it or anything, which is good. Uh, the filter I used was actually this one on um, for these. I ran it over the photo sketcher one, so that got rid of the blockiness even more uh, of the of the 3D render. So that was another reason I sort of wanted to do it. Then I could. Uh, break it down into just basic shapes and colour. Uh, this is the... Actually, I think I, I edited the colours from the render quite a bit in Affinity Photo first. Um, sorry, this video is a bit all over the place, but... <laughs> It might be important to mention these things. Uh, so I edited the colours. So this was the original renders colours. Uh, quite orangey, sort of bright tones. I wanted it to look more wintry, colder, so I I put it in Affinity Photo and changed the colours, the hue, saturation and values and put a little bit of a snowy effect over to see if that would be nice or not. And uh, that's then the picture I used in Photosketcher and then in this dynamic auto painter to uh, yeah. So, you know, you can make your paintings that you've hand painted in these digital art programs look even weirder. So, yeah. That's why I only sort of think of it as a um, development tool, to be honest. Although there are people who, who use this for turning photography into with uh, painting effects, which is primarily uh, this program's audience. Uh, some people would say that was uh, cheating. Um, I don't know. I'm fairly open-minded when it comes to digital art. I mean, unless... I, I wouldn't really do that myself. Um, I've never thought of doing that, but some people think it's uh, fine, who am I to say? So I'm not going to judge anyone. 
anyway, um, procrastinating a bit. So I went to. I'll just stop that. These uh, impressions. And you can choose different. You can load your own images as well. You can try different color schemes for the. Uh, painting effects. Um, so I loaded a load of wintry sort of colours to try out different things. So in this this section here you can choose the palette and you can go for colour match and then you can pick a different picture here and it will use the colours in these whatever you pick to do the painting instead so uh, um, sometimes it works quite nicely and sometimes it you know it's just part of that creative process of trying different things I've never I've never done this before. I, I just did it for this project and it was uh, sort of interesting. So I came up with these different schemes by doing that. Um, I actually quite liked this one and this one I thought was quite quite funky. Um, But uh, all in all, actually this one's quite quite nice too. <laughs> but I thought the fox needed to be more st to stand out more, so I edited it and put the redder fox on that one. But when I compared it against the original one. I basi basically decided after all of that that the first one I did was the best one. So that's just typical really. But you never know, um, that might not happen. So yeah, sometimes the different colours work out and sometimes they just look really weird, so just a matter of experimentation, I think. There's also another way to try different colours in this called the Leroy Colour Randomizer. Um, it's got some presets that the developers made. So if you wanted to maybe try a different, more creative approach, you could test out how different colours might look. See that one's, that would be quite nice. Maybe make the background blue and the squirrel still red so it stands out. Uh, not all of them work out. That one's quite interesting. So there's also, you can load your own palette images here and tweak the settings with these sliders. So I just thought I'd mention that. Um, then I exported, there was a save transparent layers and you can save the underpainting file as well as the final output so you can save it as uh, it, it does actually redraw it so it's a little bit bigger than the pitch you put in so that might be a useful process to you as well if you like to work with smaller images and then gradually enlarge them so you can save it double the size as well 
But basically that's um, enough of that. So I chose this colour scheme. And then in Krita I, I got some reference images. Uh, I'll probably show you that too. I used a program called Pure Ref and I put some images in like a mood board that I'm going to help use to help me paint the details and things for this picture. Um, but I didn't want to just use one photograph and just copy a photograph for this, this one. I thought I'd push myself a bit more because uh, it's a bit dull copying photographs outright. Uh, it's it's useful for practicing, but ultimately you can't really do much with the pictures. I just sort of practice, and no one's that interested in them. I I don't think so. Technically, it's good, but ultimately it's pretty dull. So anyway, I got these mood boards put together from images I've collected over the years, and uh, these pictures are from Pexels or Unsplash. So, and this one is a photograph I took in two thousand and ten when it got really snowy. <laughs> Um, these are the pictures I found on the internet, these two. I just liked the mood of them, so I wouldn't like put a Japanese guy in the painting or anything, I just thought, just as an idea for the snowy, cold feeling and the, the snow and, you know, might be a good inspiration. Um, this one I quite like because the trees in the background, the way they, they fade out, I might do something like that in the picture um, just to give it a bit more depth. And I also like the snow, the way we've got these sort of lumps and these shapes that might make it look a bit more interesting. And then the fox itself. <laughs> I couldn't actually find a, a photo I wanted to copy outright, so that's why I made the 3D model. Um, but I will use these to sort of help me paint the fox, just to get the anatomy and the details of the colour and the fur a little bit better, I suppose. <laughs> Although I'm thinking of keeping this picture fairly stylized. Um, so I'm not going to go with this photorealism or anything. Uh, so, oh, this is a picture I took uh, a few years ago. I think it was 2017. It snowed. We made a snowman. So, yeah, that was the beast from the east. Yep. That might be a picture of up the woods. I can't remember if I took that one. <laughs> yep, that's uh, the reference I'm going to use. So I've got this outline drawing. Um, I did sort of look at the reference to think about these, putting a bit more <laughs> leafy, snowy shapes in the trees. Um, just as a very rough guide, and I also thought the fox footprints might be nice. And then here I've got the underpainting I exported from that program I just showed you, Dynamic Auto Painter. So I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to paint this completely from scratch, but it seems sort of illogical to me after all that development, doing that, and uh, 
creating this base I could just paint over. It seems fairly uh, counterintuitive to just paint it from scratch after that. Um, basically I'm thinking of using the this one as an underpainting just to get me started. Um, because that'll save quite a bit of time and I've got all the colours and everything mapped out. Um, so I just think I'm going to do that. So I've got Project Dog Waffle open here or PD Howler, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is the newest version. <laughs> Um, there's some brushes I will be trying out that I haven't really looked at much yet but they're um, sort of different um, got some glitter brushes it's he's just implemented these um, recently so they're using like um, RGBA uh, tint RGB on some images with some. So if I don't have that, you can see that's the original image. And then if you try to change the color of it, it doesn't. So he's put this thing in so you can actually change the color of it now. Which is brilliant. Uh, yeah, I don't. There's yeah some in nice impasto effects now can be created, and it also supports the the bleed setting, so it can also blend into different things. So if I turn that right up, you'll see you can get some really nice blendy effects but it gives a more sort of textured uh, real paint look to it and it also works with the animated brushes I think these might be animated brushes uh, I don't, I'm not sure but anyway it, I think it is using different brush tips so it, yeah gives a bit more variety than if you just had one shape and you can make your own brushes and things in this program I did actually do a video on that so gives you even more creativity there this one is is really nice um, Sand paper. So I just thought I'd mention that because I'm going to be maybe using that to give a bit more texture to the snow, was what I thought might be nice. Uh, especially the glittery sort of effects. I um, thought that would work nicely, so we'll see. So how I'm going to start the picture is I'm going to put my outline sketch I did in Krita in here and then I'm going to load to a stored image the underpainting actually I might just start with the there's no point just starting with the underpainting because the the more detailed one is still pretty loose so it counts as an underpainting in my opinion so create a new layer and then paste that image onto that layer and then put my outline above it 
maybe I'll add a white layer underneath here so I can paint onto that directly and just uh, get started with the painting basically <laughs> so that's where I'm at with this at the moment um, thanks for watching I know it's been a bit of a weird video um, yep yeah, have a nice uh, holiday if uh, I don't talk to you um, before that uh, and all the best.